Okay, so this video is a video detailing everything about our gantries that we built. So we have uh, videos that show the actual process of building the gantries, but if you're trying to build your own gantries, this video might be helpful to you just because I'm going to go through all the exact dimensions of the wood that we purchased, um, how I cut them, why I cut them that way, and where we utilized all the wood, as well as like the brackets and um, screws and everything that we used also. So this is just something I wish was available whenever we were building it and I couldn't find it anywhere. So if you're in the same position, maybe this can help you out a little bit. So uh, this is just a rough overview of the gantries that we built. Oh, and also I'm going to make like a PDF version of all of these pages. That way we can just upload them to the website, which will be linked in the description. Uh, that way you can download them if you need them. You don't have to worry about like trying to screenshot them or anything. So this is just a rough overview of what we built two of these two 12 foot tall gantries that are 10 feet wide with the necessary supports built into them to lift the airstream shell off can't guarantee that it'll work for you but it did work for us um, it's actually pretty strong and we didn't have any issue with it wanting to collapse or anything crazy like that so yeah so to start off with just the wood that we bought. We bought treated wood mainly because one, it's gonna be outside and we want it to last a long time. So, I mean, obviously untreated wood is a lot cheaper, but it doesn't have the, the longevity that this wood has. So four by six by 12 foot pieces, we bought two of those. Those are our cross beams at the top. People have used four by four by 12 or four by four by tens in the past, um, but they kind of said that it would bow in the middle under the weight of the airstream shell so we just went ahead and yeah used a 4 by 6 by 12 and it worked it worked great make sure to get a 12 foot piece though just because those extra two feet you do end up using elsewhere in the gantry system so don't just buy a 4 by 6 by 10 because then you won't have enough wood uh, so 4 by 6 by 12 foot uh, two of those 4 by 4 by 12 foot four of those those are your uprights you don't have to cut those at all which is great 2 by 6 by 12 we needed four of those we use those for the, the feet, the base, the base here of the gantry system. And then two by four by twelves, or yeah, two by four by twelve foot. We used five of those and that's just for like the miscellaneous bracing that we did throughout the gantry system. So that's all the wood you need. And yeah, everything else is just screws and plates and Okay, so right now I'm editing the gantry video that you're watching. Um, you're watching this video, and I realized that while recording the video, I never addressed the metal plates we used and the screws that we used, and that might be important for some of you guys, so I wanted to take a quick moment and just talk about it right now. Okay, so on my computer, I have up the exact metal plates that we used. They, we needed eight of them total, um, and so, I mean, obviously you can just follow this um, web link that I'm going to include in the description and on our website, and you could probably find them at your own Home Depot. Um, they worked really well. It was just a matter of putting screws through all the, all the holes available and putting one on either side of each 90 degree at the top connection between the 4x6 and the 4x4. So total, that's eight of them that you need. Um, and then along with that, we also bought these screws from Amazon, which I'll again leave a link to in the description below and also on our website uh, in case you want to use these. They're, they they worked great for us. The length was good. No issues, no complaints about either of these two items. So these two things paired with the, um, the lumber um, worked out really, really well for us. So and they'll probably work really well for you as well. Um, yeah, so now you can continue watching about the whole wood thing. Uh, this is a diagram of um, the gantry itself. So you have the the upright here. I try to label them here so A corresponds to obviously this piece here, these, and then we have this. So just the different different angles, different views of all the same gantry. This bottom piece is kind of looking down on an isolated like leg of the gantry. So these are the two by twelves that you would use here. The scrap pieces of uh, four by six go right here to give you the proper spacing between the two by twelves. 
Um, and then this is that four by four that's coming straight up to form the, the uprights of the gantry. So, the first thing we did was take our four by six by 12s and we cut two feet off of them. Your, your Airstream, if you're using this for an Airstream, your Airstream is only eight feet wide. So cutting it down to 10 feet gives you plenty of space on either side of the Airstream between the support leg and the Airstream itself. And you use those extra couple couple feet um, to make the, the, the feet, which I'll show you here in a little while. But yeah, so first thing we did, cut down the four by six by 12, down to a four by six by 10. And, and that's all you have to do to that piece. Uh, the 4x4x12s, four by four by those, like I said, those are fine. You can cut them down to be exactly 12 feet if you want to, just because they come with a couple inches on it, like over 12 feet. Um, but we just matched them, we just paired them up as best we could. I think two of them were like 12 and a quarter, and two of them were like 12 and a half. So we put the two 12 and a half together, two 12 and a quarter together, and I didn't have to cut them at all. So, yeah. And then making the base, this is like the most labor intensive part, just everything that goes on here as far as cutting, screwing together, and bolting together. Everything else is pretty easy. Um, we, oh, we also made, a, took a couple 2x4s, cut them into one foot little pieces, and just put them on the, like, the end where our 4x4 four four and our 4x6 like, came together. We put, a, we put a one foot piece of 2x4 there and screwed that on, just to help, help with like the like those two surfaces meet up and we don't want it to like slip over that way. Um, we have the plate like right here to help hold like side to side, but this way we put the plate, the one foot piece here and then we had the, these guys here to help hold everything solid. So yeah, uh, moving down to the feet. So the feet, um, like I mentioned, you cut off the extra two feet of four by six and then um, just cut yourself like two, four, six, eight, eight little blocks um, that are four inches long. So you're gonna have a four by six by four inch block. You'll have eight of those and then you're gonna use those in the feet, which I'll show you right now. Okay, so the feet, as you see them right here, this is those little blocks I was just talking about. You need eight of them because each leg requires two and there's four legs. So you put those in between your two by sixes to maintain the proper spacing. Make sure you put it like with the, the width side being the four inch side. So you want four inches going this way and four inches going like inwards and then the six inches coming like height wise, if that makes sense. And then here's your four by four upright and then the other block and then um, your two by twelves or your two by six by twelves. You cut each of those into six feet segments, and then pair each of them up, sandwiching the four by six blocks and the four by four upright. And then put. I, I was doing like a pattern. I don't want to draw on this. Let me see. I was doing a pattern, kind of like uh, like with my. So you have your, your board here. I was doing like a screw, a screw, a screw, a screw, a screw. Um, doing that all over, pretty much everywhere. So I put that, that pattern five here, five here, five here, five here, five here, and five here. Um, so each leg had a total of, what is that? It's like 30 screws, um, and then the two half inch um, bolts going through. Um, the, the upright. So yeah, that kind of hopefully clarifies this piece. And then what else do you need to know? Oh, right. So these, um, these supports here, um, essentially what we did, so the, the leg is six feet long. So um, if you take into consideration that four inches from the four by six block um, that's here and here, and then the four inches from the four by four that's here, you're left with like five feet, 60 inches. Um, so divided evenly between these two spacings, that's 30 and 30, 30, 30, and this ended up being like 42.4, uh, which I just rounded up to like 43 and it still worked fine. So yeah, so 43, 43 should, should fit in there perfectly for you. Um, and then, 
up here is just showing how the 4x6 sits on top. It sits like literally on top of the 4x4, so that's why this little one foot piece of 2x4 helps to just cap that end. And then on the other side, obviously, you have the, the, I don't know what they're called. These guys. So, so yeah. So on this next page, I'm just going to try and kind of show you how everything ended up getting cut down. So four by six by 10 feet, um, you cut two feet off of each four by six by 12. Um, so you end up with two of those two 4 by 6 by 10s For the uprights, the 4 by 4 by 12 feet, you have four of those. You don't have to cut those unless you want to or, or unless they're always like awfully like off from each other, but I don't think that'll be the case. They're normally like within like a half inch of each other, so 4 by 4 by 12, four of those. Um, the 2 by 6 by 6 feet, you need eight of those because each of them are paired together to sandwich everything in between it, and there's four feet, so... Uh, two by six by six, eight of those. Um, the four by six by four inch blocks that you cut off of your 12 foot piece up here, eight of those. And remember, it does matter the way you orient it. Just make sure that you make it like four, like put one of the four inch sides for the depth inwards, put one of the four inch sides for the width so that it matches with this four by four, and then the six inch length to just make that the height, which works out great because these are two by sixes anyways, so everything like flushes up, which you'll see it, in, in the video, you can see that in the, um, in the other videos that I posted. So yeah, four by six by four inch blocks, eight of those. So then two by fours by 43 inches, <clears throat> those are the, the supports from the bottom. You're gonna cut those at 45 degree angles and you have to make sure it turns out like a parallelogram rather than like a trapezoid. Just because, again, if you, look, if you watch the video I posted, you'll see why it's important, but it just helps with like how, the, how everything mates up together um, and make sure everything is flush and where you want it to be. So um, two by four, but 43 inches, eight of those total, and make sure that you cut them opposite of each other. Then you have two by four supports that are two feet long and four feet long. And these also are cut at 45 degree angles, but this time they're cut in trapezoid shapes because they're, they're kind of just being pushed into, and in, like pushed up into there, up into the, that section. So, oh, you can kind of see it like, because this is actually two separate supports. Um, I don't. I had extra wood, so I figured the more support the better. But if you picture this as a single piece of wood, you can see how the, it's like the trapezoid shape rather than the parallelogram shape. But uh, when you, whenever you actually build this, if you build this exactly how we did, this is a, its own two by four, and this is its own two by four. But just for like visualizing the trapezoid shape right there. Yeah. So you need four of the two by four by two feet and four of the two by four by four feet pieces. And then the last thing is just four of those one foot two by four like in, in cap pieces. All this stuff will be either in the first uh, gantry build video or in the second gantry build video. Both of those should be going up soon. Um, once they're both up, I'll link them both into the description below. In case you're watching this after the fact, if you have any questions, hopefully I can help answer those for you. Like I said, I'm not I'm not a carpenter by any means. I just this is what I like envisioned. It kind of just pulled ideas from different sources. No one had like a super clear cut, easy way to do this. Or if it was super clear cut, it was ex super expensive. And since I only planned on using this for the airstream, I didn't want to waste too too much money on it. So this is what I ended up going with and it worked really well for me and for Madison. Like I said, it was very sturdy, it is very sturdy. We plan on flipping the trailer with it, but yeah, hopefully this helped you out. Oh, also one more thing. If you are using this for like a, a shell off Airstream application, this was all the wood that I just talked about for the um, gantry itself, but you might also wanna buy wood just to stabilize the inside of your shell um, so we ended up buying non-treated wood, uh, two by four by eight feet 
We bought eight of those just to like run along the ribs inside, which you'll see in one of the videos. And then we bought a two by 10 by 25 foot board to actually run the, the length of the spine to attach our chain hoist to with the eye bolts um, to actually give us our lifting power. This, this length here, like the 2x10 is probably pretty universal for our, all Airstreams, but the 25 foot portion, um, that'll kind of vary depending on what length of Airstream you have. If you have a Bambi, you could probably get away with, you know, like a 16 foot piece or an 18 foot piece. But we have a 29 foot uh, Airstream in our AC vents that we were lifting through. Um, we tried an 18 foot piece and it just did not work. We absolutely had to have this 25 foot 2x10. So yeah, that's everything. Um, hopefully this helps you out a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and visit our website to see everything else. And that's all I can think of. Okay, bye.